I am a mama's boy. Not one of those socially awkward kids who constantly was attached to his mom's ape from strings as a child, nor the extreme example of Norman Bates and Psycho. But as I grew up, I did have a close relationship with my mother. And as I aged, I valued my mom's input and her advice. Looking back, my mom has had a significant impact on my life. Not so much from the things that she said, but more often from the actions that she did. There's one incident in particular which has deeply touched me. And to this day, she has no idea of its impact. But because of this one action, I believe that she has changed my life forever. The respect that I have for my mom goes way back. Being the third child, I was the reason that she quit her job as a bank auditor to stay home. She uncomplainingly cooked all of our meals, cleaned the entire house, drove us wherever we needed to go, and tucked us in at night and told us bedtime stories. She completely abandoned all of her dreams for us. Growing up on the farm, I also remember seeing her out there shoveling manure from the horse stalls and feeding the sheep, and hauling water to the barn in temperatures of 10 degrees below zero, because the water heater had frozen. That was my mom. My mom and mine alone. I was so proud that she was my mom and no one else's. On top of all those things, she was also a teacher, homeschooling me and my siblings for a majority of our education, as well as a wife, being faithfully committed to my father for over 25 years of marriage. Because of all of this, I had a great deal of respect for my mother. Unfortunately, it often went unsaid. There is still one aspect of my mom's life, though, that needs to be mentioned. She firmly held on to her spiritual beliefs. She loved God and was ever present in her daily life. Every night, my mom and dad would get together and pray for us children, as well as for the happenings in the world around us. On top of all of this, my mom would each evening spend time reading the Bible or a devotional and praying. Coming home at 2 a.m. some mornings, I can distinctly remember climbing the stairs to see my mom, still in her room, reading her devotional by the glow of a lamp. It was these impressions that stuck with me. She never had to say anything. It was simply present in her everyday life. I grew up in the church, but I would never say that I inherited my parents' beliefs, nor their faith. I went to church every week and stayed for the sermon, and Sunday school, and children's choir, and Awana, one of the religious clubs at the church. However, these beliefs were simply never my own. I assumed that I would discover what I believed in college, when I had more independence and I could do as I wished. Well, that time would come soon enough. My relationship with my parents became strained in high school, and even though I still had a great deal of respect for them, <coughs> I didn't want to be seen with them. However, that was not meant to be. In order to gain that independence of college, I had to first somehow get there, which means that my siblings and my parents packed up all that I owned into a pop-up camper and drove me from Wisconsin to Virginia. That was seven straight days where I spent every waking moment with my family. I had no personal car, no privacy, no cell phone reception, no escape from parents wanting to take a picture of me in front of the White House, no escape from an eight and a nine year old younger sibling who were in dire need of a bathroom break, no escape from family, by well, the time that I actually arrived in Richmond, I was practically shoving my parents out the door. I no longer wanted to be seen with them, and after this past week, I just wanted to be on my own. At final goodbyes, there was only a quick, awkward hug, and then they were gone. Completely out of my life. And suddenly, I was alone. I was at a university where I knew absolutely no one. My closest friend or relative was in Connecticut. And I was a giant bundle of emotions. At the same time, I was feeling excited, anxious, and sad. However, my parents didn't leave me alone as much as I originally realized. During goodbyes, my mom did one action unbeknownst to me. She left something on my bed. And as I was attempting to organize my room later that day, I discovered it. It was a small maroon book with faded gold letterings on the title. And it was My Utmost for His Highs, the classic daily devotional by Oswald Chambers. And as I opened the front cover, I discovered that there was a handwritten note on the inside. And it said, August 22, 2007. Ben, this book has helped me grow a little more each time I have read it over the past 10 years. It takes only a few minutes to read each day. But my prayer is that it will help you grow in your walk with Christ as it has me. We'll be praying for you as you continue your next phase of life at the University of Richmond. Go with God. Love, Mom.
The more I looked at the book, the more I was touched. As I flipped through it, I saw all the handwritten notes and the underlining and the personal comments. This had been my mom's private devotional for over half my life, and this had been the book that she was reading when I returned home late those nights. She was reading it by the glow of the lamp, and it was those impressions that really stuck with me, and this was that book. I knew how much this book meant to her, and it truly touched me that she was willing to pass it on to me. It was a reminder of her love, and a reminder that we would always be together through the power of prayer. It's a small object, yet for me it serves as a 1,200 mile bridge back home with my parents. Growing up, I always wanted to have the faith of my parents, but I never realized that this would be the way in which I would achieve it. To this day, my mom has no idea of the significance of her one action, but it has meant the world to me. At a time in my life when meaningful connections can be difficult to find, I know that every night, regardless of how late I've been awake studying for homework, there will always be one connection waiting for me still, and I thank God for it.